Fingers off so that the exhaust can drop a bit. Um, Wade is now actually taping the front edge of the H pipe. That way it gives us an actual guide where to cut. Say that again. Any last words? No, do it. Fully cut. One more note, uh, Wade just told me that if uh, once you're done cutting that, you want to go ahead and actually take a uh, air compressor and blow out any debris. You don't want any metal in your eyes. Next up, these clamps come off. Freaking Chevys, man. Speaking from a, that's coming from a Ford guy, so I'll be editing that out. Yeah, not bad. I'll be saving that just in case I get a uh, notice the uh, indent. Right. I'll be saving that piece in case I need to put these back on. So the instructions will also state that you need to keep it just in case you uh, have to put them back on. So I would suggest you do that. So again, that tab right there needs to be released to get this off. Voila. As you can see, there's a little knob. Okay, so what you want to be careful of is, as we discussed, that clip on the front, right here, is on the passenger side. On the driver's side, the clamps are reverse of each other. Let's flip it over and you can see the clip is on the back edge. This one doesn't affect us because we remove it here. This one affects you because we're removing it here, but it won't release until this clip is released from the pipe in the front. So just make a note of that. And uh, one last thing, don't forget to remove the tape. <laughs> Wade has taken the clamps and put them back on, or actually he left them in. So we know which actual pipe goes on which side. We've actually labeled them. Passenger side and the driver's side. The clamps still stay on.
proper placement of the actual diverter system is crucial. So make sure that you have the appropriate angle and the right um, spacing in terms of the actual transmission hitting up against the actual diverter system. So actually properly lining it up. Okay guys, just want a word of caution. Um, that bolt right here, you do not want it to actually rub up against the actual diverter system because as your car is going to be idling and running, you don't want it to be rattling um, throughout its, you know, I guess installation or I mean not installation, but oh God. Guys, pay attention to this uh, transmission cross member bolt. You don't want it to touch the uh, diverter because it'll cause a real bad body noise under hard acceleration. Um, try to keep that away. You want about this much gap here, about a quarter inch or so. Same goes for the actual uh, Dakota Digital actuator. You want about a quarter inch between the cross member itself here, which means you have to rotate this down and away. You don't want it to be too far away such that this harness, wiring harness, isn't below the cross member. You want to try to keep this higher but maintain this gap here. That's the best way to mount it. For those of you out there, this is the, the rear clamps that we're putting on. These are not the stock OEM clamps that GM has uh, on the fronts. And now Wade is adjusting the height to get them right. And he will start tightening them. Uh, I'm gonna orient the clamp so that the studs don't hang straight down. If you do that, by the time this thing is clamped, the studs are going to be really long. So what I like to do for a cleaner look is to rotate and orient the clamp this way, just so that I can get to the, the you know, like this. So from underneath the car, you don't see any of this, it's gone. It's still effective. It's just a nicer, cleaner install. see how long these become after you start clamping them down. Now I'm not going to completely uh, lock them down tight yet. I want to get the other guy together. I'll probably actually loosen it up, get the other guy in here, get it set, get the exhaust where I want it, clamp them both down. Um, I am clamping the front down tight because I want the orientation to stay where it's supposed to be. Uh, for now I'm just going to loosen these up a little bit, give me a little bit of freedom. Move it and we're good. There's the drilled hole. All right, so what I want to do now is I want to check and see if I can push the underlayment back. You can actually push it away a little bit. You can feel it. If you can, I don't know if you can see it, if you can come back here and take a look. You'll see the underlayment through the hole. The drill bit's going to grab it and it's going to rip the underlayment into a big wad. Okay. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to get a 3 8 bit and I'm going to make it really short with that tape stop. And we're going to punch 